Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's tutorial for you is White Horse Jasper and it's just gorgeous. We're going to jump right in with the colors. I have Ivory and Pompeian Red, Kaput Mortem, I don't know if you could see that too well, and Burnt Sienna for a bit of a brown. And then I have two different grays. I have a warm gray for the main shadows. It's warm gray number six. And I have cold gray number two to just make the lighter shadows recede a little bit. Um, we're going to start with the ivory as a base color and you know I love to have a base to just kind of blend everything into and use as my lightest color. The White Horse Jasper is really pretty. It's got like this just gorgeous almost marbling effect of these slightly pink browns and red reddish browns just moving throughout it almost like um a little bit of what it would feel like to do a watercolor if it was really wet and you just dip the ink on there or the dip the paint on there and it just kind of spreads. So that's kind of the effect that I want to go for. Um, using the light gray on this, the um, cold gray, I'm just going to kind of hopefully make the shadow up the top just recede that edge a little bit to help begin bringing out the depth for our stone. Um, this is not a gem. It's not translucent like a gem would be. It's opaque. So that's what I'm doing. And the top will be the lightest. It is also where the highlight will hit. Um, for the shadow at the bottom, um, make sure to get your edges really, really well. Uh, we want that to be darker quite a bit darker by the way um because that is where there is almost no light hitting um, and it will make that edge just kind of recede disappear go away from you well not disappear but you know just go away from you because no light's hitting down there and so we want it to be really really nice and dark um and give depth and roundness to 3d-esque-ness yeah, that's that's a technical term. Two R <laughs> two R stone. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and use um, my odorless mineral spirits to blend that all out, just so that we have a really nice, smooth shadows to work on top of. So I've got my little paper stump my little tortillion whatever you'd like to call it and i dip it in my odorless mineral spirits real quick and just smooth everything out get rid of any of those little white spots that i see and just give it a very very nice very light blend and that's all i really want on there as far as the shadows go because we can always deepen the shadows later on it already look kind of 3d because that's what the light and the darks really do so now to add start adding some of the veining of it um, i'm starting with the pompeian red and just making it very organic feeling and just kind of drawing in those little veins and cracks wherever i'd like them um, trying to give it a very wishy-washy effect which will come in later on but right now I just want to give it some structure so I like my veins to be very organic feeling so I try not to do like any geometric shapes or anything but I do like to touch them together and make them kind of flow so that's just kind of what I do you could do them very very structured it would be very interesting um, and I would love to see your version, of course. So, giving a little bit of shading here to the sides of the veins. 
we're definitely going to come in and put in more as we go. I felt like this was just too big of an opening. It needed some, some more veins down here. Or cracks, I guess. Crackling throughout the gem. Stone. Stone gem. Yeah. The, uh, the reddish brown that I'm using is the Caput Mortem. Which is a very interesting name, by the way, for a color pencil. Uh, and I'm just going to go in and block in some colors. Uh, there is quite a bit of this more brownish, reddish color in the actual Jasper that I was looking at. I looked at multiple, multiple pictures of it just to find some that, and just kind of get the feel of the type of stone. And so I just want to go in, reinforce some of the veins uh, as a darker color and just block in a whole bunch of the color all around wherever I felt like it needed it. I am keeping it kind of on the lower half of the gem, but I pro or the stone, excuse me. I'm used to saying gem way too much. And just finding where I want to put it. Again, this would be really, really interesting if you did very structured, almost like a checkerboard. That would be really cool, too. Or maybe do circles. I love circles. But I was just kind of putting it in, in the uh, corners of, of things and just wherever else I felt like it needed more depth and darkness and color and you know just coloring because coloring that's that's a reason I didn't want it to look very structured so I just kept putting it in random spots wherever I felt it was needed or wanted the uh, setting by the way is done just with a simple Gray, I think I used Payne's gray and then light ultramarine blue. Um, so it was just light ultramarine and just kind of shaded them in. I didn't really do a whole bunch there. And I left the circles. I might, might put something on them later. I don't know. But, um, yeah, the feathers were super easy and I liked the blue. Putting in that light blue just kind of helped it to pop a little bit against the more brownish reds. And this is the Burnt Sienna, which I pretty much just used for shading. Um, I knew that when I go in in just a moment with the Ivory, that um, putting in a very, very light touch of the Burnt Sienna will make this kind of washed out effect when I go over it with the ivory like real well it's going to make the ivory come out a little bit more vibrant as well as just give a very polished and wash kind of look to the burnt sienna and that's something that i wanted in this so you can see how light i'm using it right there it's just very very light barely touching it and I'm going to grab my ivory and start going over everything and just blending it together. And this is where I love polys and just the amazing blending that they have. Um, and how they blend to each other just almost seamlessly. You guys know I'm such a huge polychromos fan. But just going in those little round circles and kind of getting everything to just get rid of the harsher lines of it um, and just giving it a very put together type feel as you can see right here it just blends out so well and blends together and gives it that very nice feel to it I 
I wanted to make sure that the entire thing got covered so that it gave it that completeness to it. And I realized I really wanted to deepen a little bit of the um, bottom shadow there after I went over it with the ivory. As well as at the top, there's also a little bit around the edges that I kind of just wanted to push back a little bit more. So after going over it again with the ivory, I'm just going to get my warm gray number six. Oops, totally forgot about that. I'm just getting some more of that red in there, the Pompeian red. And you can go over it as many times as you want and just bring out which whichever colors you like the most. And I mean, this can be used with any colors. You don't have to use the same colors I use, unless you're trying to make white horse jasper. You could do this with any colors and it would look pretty much awesome. I mean, like neon green. Like, bam. That'd be pretty freaking cool. Just making that vein over there a little bit more pronounced. And this is where I go in with the shadow, the warm gray. And just really make the bottom quite a bit darker. It makes the rest of the stone stand out so much better when you make sure that your edges are dark because it really tricks your eye into that illusion of no lights hitting it, therefore it's farther away. Um, giving it a little bit more of the um, 3D illusion to it. I want to make sure all of it matches, so of course I've got to go in over it with the ivory again because that's just the way I am. I'm way too much of a perfectionist. And then I realize that the top really needs to be taken down a notch. I was like, yep, that's not quite as dark as I want it. I want it darker. So I grabbed my warm gray went over just the edges with it and then of course got to put on our highlight here at the very end and just make it nice and shiny giving it that sparkle that is so like our polished gems and stones that we love. Following the edge right there. And then I decided that it needed to be a little bit bigger so that you can see it just a little bit better. And I use my ivory, of course, to clean up the highlight just a little bit. Uh, make sure my edges are nice and sharp. Because I like them to be very clean and very sharp. Just as the highlight would hit a very highly polished stone. And then I decided that there was a light coming from a little bit of a different source. So I wanted to give it a little bit of a highlight on the other side. Just a tiny thin slice. And then just editing it down just a tiny bit so it's just a hair of a highlight with my ivory. And that's it guys. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you go and make your own. And uh... Show me and tag me when you do yours and post them.